just the feeling of like being in a firefight and hearing the, the click of the gun, throwing it down, grabbing one off the wall. My gunner's upside down and he's like laying in. I see kill assist, kill assist, kill assist. Any pistol across any of the games. Whatever gun allows me to feel the most like John Wick, I am there. I remember how excited I was with like this big combat with vehicles going all over the place. Halo means something different for everyone, right? I think that that's what makes Halo great. What is Halo multiplayer? And for me, it boils down to this tight arena style combat and big team battle, this wide open vehicle infused uh, kind of combat. We're taking that awesome legacy or classic Halo combat experience and modernizing it in ways that'll feel fresh to old players and really exciting to new players. We're gonna give you great ways to customize your Spartan, really make your super soldier your own, and we're kicking off a journey, an experience that's gonna evolve month to month, season to season, year after year. For me, working through this multiplayer of this game, and the toughest challenge I think was really about how do we respect the legacy of what came before us, but still build something that feels new? We've tried to bring all these elements of legacy and really inject them into Halo Infinite, not just like in a, in a, in a way where you kind of won't notice it, where you feel like, oh, they really designed this to be a celebration of previous Halo, as well as an iteration of where Halo can go next. The vision of Arena was all about a tight experience. It was all about being fair. It was all about earning everything on the map, earning everything, every kill you get. Going back to like what is the core foundation of what made the great Halo multiplayer Arena matches great. Halo, it's really about fair and balanced starts. So everybody's on equal footing when they come off the rip. And then once they start running around, it's about scavenging. It's about finding new toys and, and kind of developing your play style as you run through the match. What makes Halo feel like Halo? Um, I feel like uh, the answer to that question is, is the sandbox. Like, the sandbox is Halo. When we set out to look at Halo Infinite from a high level and the direction of what it is, there's lots of exciting things there because we really wanted to push what are the things that are true to Halo, but what are the things that fans haven't seen yet? Equipment is back, but equipment is kind of has the has a has a bigger voice than ever before. We ask questions to ourselves of uh, if you could go after you know a power weapon to get a bunch of kills, uh, would you do that, or could you go and get grapple to make sure that you swing yourself to the other side of a map to back cap a stronghold? We saw that as like another avenue of not just skill expression but tactics for teams to coordinate around. The exciting combinatory nature of you know, this toy plus this toy and how those interact with objectives is super amazing. Looking at how the power-ups play, like your classic power-ups, like the overshield and the active camouflage. For this title, what we're looking at, what we're excited for, is you pick that up and you choose when you activate it. It goes into your inventory. If you haven't used it and someone kills you in multiplayer, you drop that overshield and then they can take it, use it for themselves. That to me is very legacy, but we took the equipment side of it and modernized it. When it comes to the vehicles, we went in and decided to invest a lot in the, the systems. When I take damage in my Warthog, uh, my, my wheels can get blown off, my hood can get blown off. There's different aspects of the vehicle that change how my vehicle handles now. And that's something that's brand new. The other thing we added to that is like this doomsday mechanic. So when you hit this threshold, the vehicle catches fire and it's very much, you've got a certain amount of health or a certain amount of time and you gotta choose what you wanna do with the last minutes of this vehicle. We've got a cousin to the Warthog, which is the Razorback. The back has this like multi-storage compartment that you can put a lot of stuff into. So if you want to put like detached turrets, power weapons, fusion coils, objectives, and that is what's really making uh, the Razorback kick a lot of butt in MP and campaign. The levels define pace for the game, how frantic it is, and they define that iconic fantasy for players as they're entering that match. What do they want to do? Um, what type of experience are they hoping to have? What kind of combat, what kind of dance floor is there available to have that combat in? For me, BTV is all about experiencing uh, the full extent of the sandbox of Halo in just one match, right? Like you see the vehicles, the weapons, the equipment. 
we really wanted to take that kind of concept, those feels you had, you know, playing the play, playing the previous games, and just turn the volume up. Vehicles are no longer just spawning at bases anymore. We have pelicans delivering them, and we have a commander in your ear telling you that pelicans are going to be dropping off these vehicles. Scorpion tank is inbound. We have. Halo 2 style Delta Halo mission weapon pods that fall from the sky to resupply the field. That's where it makes it feel like, like a real battlefield and, and it's very exciting. This is not just more players, this is just this certain beautiful slice of sci-fi chaos. The announcer is your big gameplay moments, your game modes, just like the way it was before. Play. Catch. Personal AI is really a reflection and information for the player. Personal AI, designation button. So if a player grabs a flag, your personal AI is going to tell you to, you know, get that thing back to base and give you some like moment-to-moment -moment updates. Our team took the enemy flag. What if we can let players choose their own AI, and each one of those are different voices, so that players can find the one that fits their personality and their mood the best? They they add to the sense of like me, as a, as a Spartan, being more important, and, and for us in multiplayer, it is really about becoming a Spartan, your Spartan. You are you inside of the Halo universe. The body of customization content that we have on day one ensures that there will be millions of customization combinations for Spartans on the battlefield. That includes things like armor coatings, uh, armor emblems, various armor effects, down to the individual armor pieces. So your shoulders, your gloves, your knee pads, your helmet, your visor, your helmet attachments. Then you look at weapons and we've got a whole slew of customization offerings there. Vehicles have a, have a huge pool of customizations too. We support customization in the game. Players can do the same thing on halowaypoint.com as well as the Halo Waypoint app. The player also customizes the Spartan, the soldier inside the suit. We want the Spartan to represent the player as much as possible. They can change their body type and their voice as well as choose prosthetics for the first time. Coatings offer us a unique opportunity to craft some hyper-polished looks and let you express yourselves in ways you've never been able to before. So we're coming at this from a player first mentality. So what that means is that there's no random loot in this. There's no loot boxes. It's very important to us that everyone understands exactly how they unlock customization content. And we have a variety of places where they can do that. First off is the battle pass. The Halo battle pass will never be taken away from you. And what I mean by that is once you buy it, it's yours and does not expire. In future seasons, you can purchase old battle passes as well as the current battle pass and choose which battle pass to put your progression towards. All of these rewards are single source, so you're never gonna be confused about where things come from. If you can unlock something in the battle pass, we're not gonna let any other players circumvent that by purchasing it out of the storefront. A lot of our stuff is unlocked through playing the game and only through playing the game. All customization is just cosmetic. Every season will have its own theme and introduce new components, new looks, new gameplay for players, new opportunities to earn and collect cool rewards. We've seen the, the Samurai already. That's one of our event armor cores, and that's gonna be something that players can earn through gameplay for free. With us going free to play for the multiplayer part of the game, like that was a big goal because, you know, how do we have a way we can always bring players in, right? And they can, when we have a new update, there's, there's They'll just dip their toes in if they even just want to see it. Not only are we free to play, but we're free to play on PC as well as console. And what that means is we're able to get the biggest audience we've ever had. I mean, everybody gets to play with no barriers. And even better, your progression carries from one platform to the next. Getting our game to be on PC and console at the same time is an amazing chance for us to really just kind of excite new players about the game. How can we do things like make cross-play interesting and like even in just customs being able to just play with your friends that like some people have PCs and some people have consoles and like let them talk to each other let them be friends why are you here to be a Spartan the Academy is a place that you can go uh, with an MP to kind of onboard into the experience it's great for newer players who are still picking up the controls and also people who want to warm up before they head into matchmaking. It's a series of experiences, both a tutorial to get started for the first time, weapon drills to practice with specific items, and also training mode that you can use to just get warm, explore the game as you want to. For players who are new to Halo, let's help them learn what this universe is about 
some of these characters. What, what are they about? And help them kind of know the vocabulary that people have been speaking for now almost 20 years so that we, when they come in there, they don't feel like they're behind everyone else. They can kind of come in on an even footing. I mean, I'm super jazzed about bots. I think they're awesome. Our goal with bots has been to have a variety of difficulties that kind of provide a good training partner for wherever you're at in the experience. Partnering with our players on the road to launch and after launch is absolutely critical, right? I mean, Halo's always been about the community conversation. We want to make sure we hear our players, make changes where we can based on that feedback, make sure the game is ready for launch, and then even beyond launch. What I'm genuinely excited about is taking the game out of our hands and putting it into the community's hands. You know, whether it's seeing what people make in Forge or the content that they're able to create with theater, watching streamers go after the game. To get involved, you go to haloinsider.com, put in your info with your gamer tag, and we should be able to reach out to you if we want to invite you to a Halo Infinite flight. We feel like we've got a pretty good selection at launch and what's going to be there for our fans. And this isn't going to be something that is just a static set of items. We have some new stuff in the works already and just can't wait to really get into that as soon as this game comes out. New maps, new modes, new ways to customize your Spartan. Launch is just the beginning. Now we're just going to be able to talk, interact more frequently. And that's just going to be great. That is the future of Halo Infinite multiplayer. Thank you to the community for all their feedback over the years so far. And uh, I'm looking forward to the road to launch, launch itself, and beyond. Play it day one with Xbox Game Pass.